By devoting just six minutes each weekday for one year, you can read through the entire New Testament using David Servant's daily devotional, Heaven Word Daily. Order your copy at heavenword.tv. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me once again as we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. And I hope that you're enjoying this as much as I am. We've almost made it through our very first book of the New Testament, Matthew. We actually only have three verses left in Matthew. And I'm afraid that we are going to drag this out a little bit because we're looking at what the other gospel writers have to say about the events that happened after Christ's resurrection. And last time we were together, we were in uh, John's gospel um, where Jesus had just appeared on Sunday evening to the 11. And actually, John clarifies it. Uh, it wasn't 11, it was 10, because Judas was gone, of course, and Thomas wasn't present at that appearance on Easter evening, the first Easter evening. So we left off in verse number 21 of John chapter 20. So hold your spot in Matthew, come with me over to John's gospel in verse 21. Uh, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I told you last time, it's my conviction that they didn't receive the Holy Spirit right then. It was just kind of a foretelling of what was going to happen. He had just told them, I'm going to send you, uh, and, but you're going to is implying you're, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is backed up, I think, by Luke's account. Um, again, if you read Luke's gospel, you'd think that Jesus ascended to heaven uh, virtually on the day of his resurrection, but uh, because he truncates the whole story. But as Jesus is giving instructions to uh, the 11, as it's recorded in Luke chapter 24, Jesus said in verse 48, a verse we had not read yet, um, well, let me back up to verse 47, a verse we have read. He told them that they should, uh, the repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be, would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. So there it is. I'm, I got a message for you and I'm sending you to the entire world. You are witnesses of these things. Listen closely and behold, I'm sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Reading that in Luke's gospel, you'd have thought Jesus said that to them on that very first Easter uh, Sunday evening when he first appeared to them, but there's no way he said it to them that night. Luke's throwing it into the mix because we know that Jesus told them to go to Galilee. He appeared to them in Galilee, and then he appeared to them once again back in Jerusalem. But here he's telling them, don't leave the city. So this must have actually been said after they went to Galilee, after he appeared to them in Galilee, and after they came back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay? All right. So, uh, but it fits what John tells us about the general message that Christ began telling his apostles over and over again. I've got a message. It's going to go to the whole world. I'm sending you and you need the Holy Spirit. All right. Now back to John 20, if you excuse me for jumping around so much here. Verse number 23 Jesus said to them next, If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Now, is he telling them that they have the authority to forgive or not forgive sins? Well, if that was the only verse in the Bible, you might think that. But there's 31,000 other verses in the Bible that we want to make sure we harmonize our interpretation of that verse with those other 31,000. Nobody can forgive sins but God alone, right? And Because that's who sin ultimately offends. And so if God forgives sin, it's forgiven. I can't tell a person your sins are forgiven you except on this authority. If the person repents and believes in Jesus, then I can say, oh, I can assure you, God has forgiven your sins with complete assurance and confidence. Not because I'm forgiving his or her sins, but because I, can, I know based on God's promise that you know, Jesus said, go and preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So there you have it. If people repent, God keeps his part of the bargain. He forgives them. Praise God. Okay, so 
uh, don't build a doctrine out of one verse that contradicts all the rest of the Bible. He, he gave them a message whereby they could offer the forgiveness of sins. And that by the same token, they could tell people that their sins were not forgiven, that they would die in their sins unless they repented, that they would die unforgiven unless they repented. They had the message, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, John continues, and this is something that just briefly mentioned the doubts of some of the disciples, but John hones in on Thomas. And I think I've told you previously, I'm actually happy that Thomas doubted uh, because so many people are so naive, they'll believe anything. And you, you could have suspected that of the other disciples uh, in, in their state of extreme grief and, and uh, you know, mixed with the expectancy of all the hopes that they did have that were crushed, that maybe these guys just became delusional. Maybe they all got drunk like they were accused of on the day of Pentecost and, and had, you know, some kind of experience that uh, they equated to Jesus' resurrection. But Thomas, not being present when Jesus appeared that first Sunday night, said, I won't believe unless I see him myself. Let's read the story from John's Gospel. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. You know, because maybe he's saying you've seen somebody, but it's somebody impersonating the Lord. It's trickery. It's magic. You know, somehow you're being fooled. But I would have to have conclusive proof. If, if, it's gonna, if I'm going to be persuaded it's Jesus, you know, I, I actually want to put my hands in those nail prints and in his side because I know that's Jesus then. Okay. And uh, it so happened, according to Doubting Thomas's wishes, after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Reach here your finger and see my hands, and reach here your hand, put it into my side, and we're out of time. So I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.